do you think I am? Don't you know he was my man? I just lay up on you, but I don't care about him. Stop playing me. He was a man in my own name. <laughs> good morning, good evening, and welcome. I am Alphonse Christopher Noel Williams, aka Noel the Lyricist, and this oh, is the Noel story. Welcome back, and I have something to tell you. First, let's get into the topic of discussion. Yeah. Keep that in the past, take this in the present and expect more in the future. I have to be honest with you all, this was indeed a little bit of a challenge for me. The reason why, because number one, I, I didn't really know anything was wrong with me. Like I knew, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't think it was on such a magnitude. And let me tell you exactly why this is important. I didn't know about this until I started growing these. PSA to everyone who would like to start growing locks. If you are not serious about the culture of the history of this, if you don't want to do no research, if you think it's just cute, you just want to look good and all that stuff, I mean, do you boo. I can't stop you from doing it, but I'm telling you, it will open your eyes to a lot of things you never would have thought you knew. Or stuff you already thought you knew, but you don't know shit. When I started growing my locks, it was to be rid vanity. Contrary to popular belief, I started growing my hair because I researched the history, the background of it, all of that good jazz and, and, and where it came from. And it was culturally ambiguous to us. It was culturally our thing, Rastafarian, culturalistic thing and they would allow their hair to grow and not necessarily lock but matte and that's more so of a free form hairstyle when you have a certain style of lock or whatever so it just kind of branched out from that instead of it just growing out of your hair and allowing it to matte to be rid the vanity of the face and all that stuff to give yourself all spiritual and stuff is very deep from that came different styles, which is this. This is just regular locks. These are locks. These are very manicured together. They don't mat. <laughs> these, these are not matting. That's not, that's not happening. However, throughout this journey, while my hair started to grow, I started to grow. Let me explain. I started realizing stuff about myself that I didn't know about myself. I started realizing that I push people away. I started realizing that I have a saboteur. I call that bitch Spitfire. <laughs> Reason why I call her Spitfire because she is also the antithesis of my rage from childhood trauma that I thought I had gotten rid of and worked through when really, no, I did not. It was just a survival tactic of suppression. Deep down, put it deep down to where I don't realize that I can still function out in life without this hurting me. When in the subconscious, I'm going through trial, tribulation, and whole a bunch of errors, which is why I would have a lot of nightmares. So in doing this, I, and I'm going to have to be honest with you, sweetheart. <clears throat> I did start smoking weed too. Listen, hear me out. Hear me out. Wait a second. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let me explain. The uses of the medicinal herbal plant, flower, I don't think it's necessarily a drug, the drought of marijuana, 
The reason why I say that is because it is considered an hallucinogenic, but when it does that for me, when I started smoking, it just opened my mind. First, it started off as, you know, crazy stuff like, is this blue really blue or is the sky really yellow? Do penguins have wings? And then when they realize they didn't have to use them anymore, they got comfortable in the, in, in, in the snow and in, in the, in the, in the, in the Arctic and shit. And then they just transform over time and now they not wings no more, they just flippers. Then we got to the notion of, well, well, what else can I think about? So I wanted to go deeper. So in opening, I, you know, hit me a little, mm, 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 got me a little, mm, mm. closed my eyes and started and allowed my mind to wonder. Little did I know I was meditating. Once I started doing that, it got deeper. It went from, is the sky really blue or is it yellow? Do penguins really have wings too? Why do I feel like no one really is there for me? And why is it that I attract individuals that come into my life, use me, and then they gone, they just out of here? Why do I feel like no one loves me the same magnitude as I love them? All of these things were my self saboteur's spitfire. She spitfire because she spits out all of these things. But the marijuana allowed me to realize in myself that I was a little broken. I was very much so flawed. Everything I thought was right may not be right. And everything that I thought was wrong may not be so wrong. So you may be thinking, uh, Noel, what does this have to do with the topic? I'm glad you asked. Keeping it in the past. When I started meditating, I prayed more. When I started praying more, God, speak, God started speaking to me more. When he started speaking to me more, he helped me realize that there was some childhood trauma that I had gone through that I didn't deal with. And the reason why I couldn't go further is because I was taking it with me. And where he wanted to take me, it was not allowed. So therefore, I'm not allowed yet. I'm not allowed to have the blessing. I'm not allowed to have the gift. I'm not allowed to have what he wants for me in my life because I'm still holding on to what was in the past. Be it consciously or subconsciously, girl, that subconscious was whooping my ass. Yes, she was. That subconscious was whooping my ass. However, I was determined. I believed in what God said to me. I believed in the vision. I believed in what I saw. I believed in my talent and I believed what I knew. And what I knew was I was not going to be a victim anymore. So if I am holding on to childhood trauma, things that happened to me in the past that really hurt, ooh, 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 broke it, almost broke it. Things that hurt me in the past, then I need to let that stuff go. How do I let it go? First of all, acknowledge that it's the problem. Acknowledge that it was a situation and it hurt you very deeply. Number two, when you acknowledge this, when you think on this stuff, the emotions tend to come back. Allow yourself to work through those emotions. It's just pain, girl, you felt worse. At first, when I when I was working through the pain, it hurt, it hurt a lot. It was a, it was very much a lot of in my room by myself, going through it, going through the motions and all that stuff. And, I, and there were times I had to shut, I literally had to shut people out because this is a process for me and the Lord. Nobody needs to see me going through this vulnerability. This is what healing really looks like. And nobody really needs to see that vulnerability in me because it's too personal. It is too personal and it is between you and the Lord. This is really a purging of childhood trauma. You got to work with God. You can't work against him. So you can't, you really don't. And, and, and furthermore, honey, you really don't want your information like this on Front Street. You don't want that. That's, 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 that's no good. Number three, after I worked through the emotions, I was able to accept that it happened, understood it, and was able to adapt accordingly. And there's some things that happened to me to this day. I'm like, I feel like it was a dream. I feel like it was a dream. But that's a survival, that's a coping mechanism. That was a survival tactic for me. If I feel like it's not real, it didn't really happen. So I can just keep going. That's not working through it. That's suppressing it. I had to work through my stuff. 
so I can keep it in the past, take it in the present. Getting rid of everything in my past and understanding that I can't hold on to that stuff no more, I realized that I have not been living in my present. I was so worried about what I'm supposed to do in the future. How can I get there? Let me do this so I can prepare for the future. And when I would do this, I would be successful in it, but then I wouldn't dwell in it. I wouldn't enjoy it. So it's just like, uh, letting go of my past let me realize I wasn't living in the present. I wasn't doing the things that I wanted to do. I, I wasn't saying the things that I wanted to say and all that stuff. And I didn't. I wasn't accomplishing the things that I didn't accomplish. So when I started living in the present, I started taking it for what it was. People started revealing who they were to me. I believed it and I and I addressed it accordingly. If you're not a part of my life, you're not a part of my life. It is what it is. I'm not mad at you. I'm not going to hold a grudge because I don't have time for that. It doesn't feel good and I don't have time. I have money to make. I have places to be. I have shit to do. I don't have time to be beefing with nobody. That's not cute. I don't. I look good and I want to stay looking good. You don't stay looking good by having beef with anybody and that's on period honey don't do it leave it alone leave it alone leave it alone leave it alone rest in peace sister rest in rest in peace sister let it go girl live in the present don't you allow nobody to interrupt your peace live in what you and do what you want to do so what did i want to start doing i started hiking more i started writing more i started singing whenever i wanted to motherfucking sing because it's my voice, it's my talent, and if I don't use it, I'll lose it, period. I started not talking to people I didn't want to talk to. I started blocking numbers and not unblocking them. You got to clear out all that bad juju so the good juju can come in. You know them folk ain't no good for you, girl. Every time they come around you, you try to tell them hard shits, they immediately start talking about them. And then next thing you know, your business out on Front Street. What happened? Uh-huh. And lastly, look towards the future. When living in the present, I understand that I have a responsibility to me and me only. I have a responsibility to do what the Lord told me to do, and that is to love, honor, and cherish myself. So therefore, I can love, honor, and cherish those who love me, and I love them. I can give respect to individuals who don't see my eye to eye with me, who don't see my point of view, and who may not believe what I believe. But we still can agree to disagree and love on each other because that's what we need the most in this world. We look towards the future of what I want to become, what I was called to be, what I was told I was going to be, and what I was supposed to do. My purpose, basically. You got to live in that. Let go of the past. Got to take, take it how it is in the present. Live in the present and take everything as it is. Don't take it too seriously. Don't try to overanalyze. Don't be anxious. Don't think too much. Don't do none of that. Just live in the present and look towards the future. Continue to be optimistic. Continue to love. Continue to honor. Continue to cherish. Continue to be you. And it's all right to evolve. But you let nobody tell you that change is wrong. Change is imminent. Change is inevitable. And if you don't change, you wither away and die. That's it. That's all I got. That's all I got, y'all. Listen, now, time for the announcement. Y'all remember when I said that uh, there was going to be a deluxe edition? Yeah. February 14th. <laughs> yes, February 14th, Homeless Sexual D Deluxe Edition will be available to you on what all streaming platform? Apple Music, Spotify, uh, Pandora, iTunes, all that good shit, honey. YouTube Music. Girl, they put me on YouTube Music. They put me on YouTube Music. Okay. Okay. And I saw and I slowly see that my subscribers is steadily rising. Listen, let me tell you something. If you're liking what you're seeing, go on and click that notification bell right beside that subscribe button that you should already have hit. Okay. That you should already have hit. And then once you do that, it'll let you know every time I do these videos and stuff. So that way I can go ahead and get your like. You can do your like. You can share this shit. Let these folks know who I am, where I come from, and what's going on. I love y'all to life. I don't love nobody to death. That's, mm -mm, I'm speak that around here. I love y'all to life. Thank you all so much for rocking with me. Let me talk my shit for a couple of minutes, pair of seconds. 
Homeless Sexual, the deluxe edition, will be out February 14th on all streaming platforms. And thank y'all so much for watching. This is the Noel Story. We out. You know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and eat me a, a, a chicken sandwich, some french fries. And then afterwards, I'm going to have me a old good old nasty Sunday with pecan whipped cream. Mm. Caramel sauce. Why? Because this is my motherfucking house. <laughs> this is my shit. Ha <laughs> ha!